Coleman, so nice to meet you. You as well. So excited that you were able to make it to DC post-strike. We have to talk to the man himself for this, and you did a, such a fantastic job. I want all of the awards for you, honestly. Thank the, you. I watched the film again this morning, and one of my favorite moments is when we see Rustin before it, at the march before it starts singing, and he says, Lord, I hope and pray they come today. Yeah. Take me back to that moment, hmm. and and what was it like, just the magic of being able to film on location at the mall? First of all, it was the hottest day of the year. Oh, it was 106 degrees outside, and it was in August as well. So we had the, <laughs> had the fortune <laughs> of, but it was wild because we were shooting at the time that that's when they were uh, marching, doing the March on Washington 60 years ago. So, you know, you, you just felt like, you're like, okay, no, it was this hot and they were wearing wool suits, <laughs> and this is this was the moment. And so I just remember being incredibly hot. But also, um, the thing that George and I talked about was, with all the bravura that um, Rustin has, there's these isolated moments of uh, self-doubt, you know? And it's usually when he's by himself. You know, he's not, he's not with anyone. So I love that moment that you picked out because it's a private moment where he's singing and looking at this beautiful day, his hope and his dream for what this can be today. And then there's just a little doubt, like I really hope they come. I really hope and pray they come today. So it's a little bit of his, that that little fragile heart. You're just like I really hope that this was, because there's a lot of people depending on this day. Yeah. He, a lot of people poured and believed in him, and he believed in them to make this day happen. So it was a tremendous responsibility. So, yeah. Yeah, and we get a little preview of your singing too. I'm excited to hear yeah. more in The Color Purple, obviously, one of my most anticipated movies. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm from Broadway, man. I'm, I'm a song and dance man. Oh, exactly. no, I know, yeah, exactly. but I was just like, I love the little preview, and you were able to do it here in Rustin. That was nice. Yeah, yeah, so I love the way that Rustin carries himself, like the way he, he speaks and the way he interacts with people. And I know you've played both real life people and also fictional people, but obviously there's that extra responsibility when it's a real life life person just talk about stepping into that and I guess like in the end you're doing more of like an interpretation of him versus a full-blown impersonation that's a, that's a beautiful way to put it you're so right because I think that you know Bayard and <laughs> as a case study he's a bit of a caricature in a way he really has created uh, himself he spoke in a mid-atlantic standard accent he had a, a very sort of thin reedier voice it was sort of pitched maybe three octaves higher than mine uh, he sang um, tenor, and he sort of like, he was very much like, you know, fearless in the way he walked into rooms. So I wanted to do that with his body and his physicality, that he felt like he owned space. And whenever he, he, he used his arms, he, was not, uh, he wasn't small in a, in a room. So I wanted to make choices in that way. And also, but also, you want to make sure that you, you make choices that feel still connected to you and your soul. So I know that George and I, George C. Wolf, our director and I, made a, a conscious decision to make sure we, because I, I could sing in a tenor voice, but we pulled it back towards that comfortable baritone that where I sing in my fullness. Yeah. So, you know, and we also made sure that like, yes, he has a very higher pitched voice, and I brought that down just a little, but I wanted to give that, that, um, that finesse every so often, and sometimes make it a little, a little bit more highbrow, a little more British in a way, from time to time, depending on the room that he was in. So it was all conscious decisions to see, like, whatever room he was in, he would change and, and shift. And so we wanted to make sure we were very thoughtful about those moments. I love hearing you talk about the voice acting because, like, I, my favorite roles, of course, is, is you as Ali and Euphoria and also Who's Zola. Who's a very different guy, right? Very different and guy. And Zola's a very oh different guy. Oh, my God. Guy. Zola, is, like, that's what, <laughs> to, to see you in this role, I was like, wow, this man can, like, really transform. Mm -hmm. I have to ask you about Euphoria. It's one of the, I think it's, like, the best series of all time. And I've spoken with Jacob about it. And and I'm curious, like, are you and Zendaya going to be in something else together? Like, I hope I so. I yes. love Zendaya. I, I, I hope J Jacob and I are in something together. I love Zendaya so much. She's such a, a compelling actress, and she's generous and kind. And, and I think that um, I would love to see what worlds we create. Oh, I can't wait for season three. They keep pushing it back, but I, I need Ali's we'll advice there. in my life. We'll get there. <laughs> well, uh, otherwise, I'll just call you up every so often and tell you some things. Yeah, great. <laughs> okay, my number. <laughs> I need his advice. <laughs> Coleman, so nice to meet you. And again, congratulations to you on this role. I cannot wait for more audiences to see it when it's out on Netflix this next weekend. So Thank congratulations you. to you. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Enjoy the so rest lovely. of your time in D.C. DCfilmgirl.com. George, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Congratulations you. on this film. I thought it was exciting 
exceptional. It's so hard to do a film on a, such an iconic historical figure, and you nailed it. So congratulations Thank you. to you. Thank you. Of course, one of my favorite scenes in the film was towards the end when we actually see the march at the mall. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious what it was like for you filming there, and also like if there were actual spectators who kind of gathered around, and just the magic of being able to shoot there. It was tremendous, and it was inspiring. It was also 117 degrees. Oh, you were here on and, day. And, and, and once it hit the marble at the Lincoln Memorial, it turned it to 120. So I was very concerned. So in my sense of wonder and awe, oh, we're here, we're here, we're here. I was worried about painting actors <laughs> and all sorts of stuff like that. But it, it, was, it, was, it was glorious and, and, and capturing the scale. And I love... I love, you know, we we filmed in Pittsburgh, but I live in New York, and there's so many buildings everywhere, and it's so wonderful coming here because the horizon mm -hmm. and the skies are so beautiful. So it was lovely having that a visual character as well. You know, not many directors have also acted in front of the camera like you have. So what did what does that give to you as a director, having acted it for film and for theater? And how did that specifically help you for directing Rustin? Well, it, I don't know if you have what have has it. I'm sure it helps somehow in Rustin, but it's just sort of like I, 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 I love actors and I love working with them, and and I understand how how that. The, the, the maximum thing that you need to bring, aside from your skill and your craft, is your vulnerability. And so, and, and, and the sensitivity to protect that vulnerability, because from that vulnerability is where brilliance and excitement and, and thrilling work comes. So, so I want to try, I work very hard as a director to try to create a sense of safety and discovery so that therefore that vulnerability combined with craft, with the language, with the stakes can make something wonderful and surprising and ultimately generous for an audience. No, I agree. Being vulnerable as an actor and of course even as a director is super important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, I, I ha so I actually have to ask you, Knights and Rodanthe is one of my favorite Nicholas Sparks films. Oh, I, well, thank you. I always love watching that film. I think that, you know, Richard Gere and Diane Lane are just ex oh, exceptional exactly. and like the, the North Carolina setting. Oh my God. So good. That whole, that house yeah, is amazing. Yeah. Oh yes. What is a favorite memory that you have working on that film? Well, the first day that we, we were supposed to film, we showed up and there was a nor'easter passing through. <laughs> so it was, I remember standing on the deck of that house and having oh. to hold on because the wind was blowing <sighs> so strong. And then just the joy of working with them. They were, they were lovely, lovely, lovely. In addition to being wonderful actors, they're lovely human beings. Oh yeah, they, they definitely are. Last question for you. What is like maybe a scene for you that you're just particularly excited for audiences to see? Oh, that's interesting. Well, I don't know about, we, I, hopefully all the scenes are excited for audiences, but one of my favorite, favorite moments is early, when early on the day of the march and people are, st are still setting up. Right. And there's this shot where you see the Lincoln Memorial and you see this lone figure, which is Bayer, descending the stairs. Mm -hmm. And you get the expanse of the building and his sense of isolation. And this man who has been the mastermind for this whole thing coming confidently down the steps. And he s sings this song to himself and then he says, I hope they show up. Lord, I, I hope and pray they, they show up today. today. 100%. <laughs> and it's that, it's that, that dynamic between the scale of the building and the fragility of that thought. I love that because I actually have that on here. That was my favorite line in the movie and my favorite moment, and it was before the march even happened. So it, I, I love that you mentioned that absolutely. scene. Absolutely. Yes. good. Well, yep. you have good taste. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Well, yeah, George, exactly. congratulations to you, and I'm so excited for audience to see it when it's on Netflix. I know it's in select theaters as well, but can't wait to, for everyone to see Coleman, Chris Rock, Jeffrey Wright. Everyone was fantastic. Everybody. Thank Everybody. you. Everybody. Thank you so much, much. George. Thank you. Thank you.